Welcome back. In a previous installment uh, video in this series on using dates and date time and uh, formatting for display purposes and introduction to some date logic, some date functions that allow us to do simple calculations and logic, we looked at forms and how we can use uh, display formatting to make our forms more efficient and, and more user-friendly. We also took an introductory look at reports and we applied some criteria to those reports, uh, to that report in order to start uh, our examination of how uh, we can use grouping and filtering and sorting in a report based on various uh, date formats. Notice that uh, because the two forms that we've used so far have no uh, date criteria, so no date range criteria in them, the start and end date are, are disabled. But if I select the report where we do have uh, date range criteria, then these uh, control boxes, these text controls uh, for start date and end date are enabled and we can select different criteria here. I'm going to select for this video a more recent range and I'm going to broaden that range to include a full year's worth of data. When I click the go button we drop into the code behind that button. Uh, the stop statement here uh, suspends code execution, suspends execution of the code so that we can examine what's happening in each uh, code line, uh, how variables are being assigned, what those uh, values are, uh, how the logic is proceeding, uh, whether we have an if we have an if statement or a select case then we can see how the branching logic is working and whether we're getting the results that we think we're going to get or expect to get. Uh, first thing this particular sub does is dim a variable to hold the name of the object we're going to open and another variable to hold the object type. In this case so far we're looking at forms and reports. As we proceed into the code itself, the first thing we do is create default values for two temp fars. I'm going to go into the immediate window. And you can see that customer ID has not yet been assigned the value. and work month has not yet been assigned a value. As we step further into the code, we go through this line and this line, and now you can see that customer ID has been given a default value of zero, and work month has been given a default value of 000012, which is the year and month. Those default values are there primarily to ensure that if we ever make a reference to one of those two temp fars anywhere in a code, in the form, in a query, that we will not get an error uh, because we're trying to work with a null. We will always have a default value that will return some result. Now that result may not be the one we're wanting. It may be a nonsense result but at least it will prevent us from getting errors that would be raised by trying to do comparisons, for example, on a null. Oh. Sorry about that. I used the uh, width structure next because I'm going to pick some values off the form 
and assign them to uh, variables and temp fars. So the uh, width structure, if you've seen it before, you know what it, we're doing. If not, I'll give you a quick explanation. Me refers to the form where this is running. In this case, we're looking at our main menu. Uh, what that allows us to do is refer to controls on that form without having to specify me each time. Uh, I find it easier uh, in a lot of cases to do a width structure and then not have to remember to type me every time I want to grab something off that form. So let's just do the same thing here. Work month has no value yet. Oops, sorry. Didn't actually get what I thought I was going to get. Nothing there. Nothing there. Step through those two lines. And now we know that the sample we're going to open is called report customer work by month. And that is the value we get from the list box. That is the bound column of the list box. Uh, we are going to get the, re the object type, which in this case is report, from the second column of the list box. Now, I won't go into that any more detail. Uh, perhaps in a later video, we can come back and look at list boxes and how they work in the different columns and the bound column and the ability to pull other values out of them. But for now, just just recognize that we now know that we're going to open this report and or this object and that that object is a report. The next thing we need to do is add temp vars for the start and end date. And unlike the two uh, default values, that we set up for um, customer ID and work month, these are going to have actual values that we'll use in criteria. To, to begin with, these are going to be What did I do wrong? Aha, spelling counts. Sorry about that, but as you learned just then, one has to be quite careful. So now we have two temp vars, both null. As we step through the code further, we have lines that assign the values to the start date and end date. A uh, couple of other things to note here. I use the see date function or convert to date uh, here. Now, I don't know that this is crucial here uh, because uh, I think I believe we can accomplish the same thing elsewhere in our code, but I am kind of a belt and suspenders kind of guy, and so if I can do something uh, the safest way possible, in my mind the safest way possible, I will be very explicit about what I want. I want those two temp vars to be dates. Uh, as far as access is concerned, it probably isn't that a big a deal, but to me, it helps in a couple of ways. One, it says, I know I've explicitly said this is a date. And if I come back later and look at that code, I know by just looking at C date that this is intended to be a date. And trust me, I read something uh, on the internet not too long ago, which basically said, the quote said, uh, when you're looking at code you wrote, six months ago, it might as well have been written by someone else. And that is really, really true. Okay, 
So we're now at the end of our with structure and we're back into the logic now. And this is the logic that will launch the object that we have selected. Here's another case where at this point I'm pretty sure that I should have a valid object name to open, but I want to be sure. And the way to be sure is to check the length of that name. And if it is greater than zero, in this case it's 22 characters long. If it's greater than zero, go ahead and open the object. If it's for some reason zero, if there's nothing there, then we uh, show the user a message, select a sample object to review, and nothing to open. And that could potentially happen if someone opened the form, clicked the Go button without first selecting an object from the list menu. Step forward. We know that we're looking at a report, so we'll step right over that first line into the report line. And here's where we're going to use the temp vars that we define. Uh, I'm passing in. At this point, we don't have a name yet. If I step over that code, now I know that the name of the variable, we're, the temp var we're going to work with is start date. This code is, has a very uh, important function in Access. Uh, I'll explain that when we get into the query where this is used. Uh, but as we're stepping through the code now, let's just go through and make sure that if the temp var called start date is in fact a valid date, then we're going to take that value and return it as a date. And again, as I said before, that C date is probably not necessary because we're doing the same thing here, but I always feel like if I can be explicit, it's going to serve a couple of different functions. So we step through this code, we say temp vars date is going to be returned as a date. And if uh, we send in anything but a valid um, date name here, we're going to send back uh, a default date, which is January 1st of 2099. And again, the reason for doing that is I will theoretically never get a case where I, there's an error raised because of a missing or null value. There will always be something there. It may give me the wrong data in the sense that it's not what I'm looking for in terms of the criteria, but it won't raise an error. And we're going to do the same for the start date and the end date. And at this point, we're back into our code that launches the report. Step on out. Minimize, and there's the resulting report. Filtered on January 1st, 2018 through December 31st, 2018. This format you probably recognized from the previous installment of this video set. Uh, January 2018, February 2018, uh, March 2018, and so on. So let's look at how the temp vars and the criteria we set are used in this query to return those values we want. Okay. The filtering is done in a query by selecting work dates, which fall between 
this start date and this end date. Now, this is that little function that I showed you. We stepped through it twice, once here for the start date and a second time for the end date. I have found that if I simply refer to the temp vars bang start date and temp vars bang end date format here, uh, let me put that in so you can see what I'm talking about. Excuse me, typing. If I do it, calling directly to the two temp vars, uh, I have found that Access doesn't always resolve those correctly. And uh, as a workaround, to ensure that it's always going to return something, I adopted this approach. So what that's going to do is return work dates that fall between those two. And because this is defined as a date, I know that it's going to show me uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 8, or January 1st, 2018, and 12, 31, 2018, uh, December 31st, 2018. Let's look at that in, in uh, data sheet view. And you can see the work date here now falls within our criteria. And that's how we use the temp vars to generate filtered record sets, the criteria being uh, the temp var against a field in the table. And at this point, we have approximately 195. Uh, there is no sorting going on here. Uh, all of the sorting done in reports is going to be done by the group and sort properties on the report itself. Okay, so now we've looked at two aspects of reports uh, filtered by date ranges. One is the grouping and sorting and the other is the use of criteria to return just the filtered record set using the uh, temp vars. In a later installment, we'll come back and look again in more detail at some additional filtering and uh, criteria that we can use uh, to make a more sophisticated kind of filter. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'll look forward to seeing you next time.